I think this is TechFlow's most requested video so far of 2018. Thank you Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. Guys, welcome to my new home network and WISP tour. Let's get this started. You're gonna have to come up if you wanna take a look with me. So guys, we've done networking videos here before on TechFlow, but nothing like this. I have put the work in, I have put the graft, and I have built this up in my loft. Now, this is a 13-1U rack. It's absolutely massive, it's wall-mounted, and the number one comment on my last really expensive network video installing in this house was, Alex, get yourself a server rack. So that, guys, I did. I didn't want to let you guys down. This is the rack. It has a glass front, removable side panels on either side to service the back of the rack, a full-on key lock system to gain access to the rack, and then also the door is fully removable. So guys, let me give you a breakthrough starting from the top. So guys, this is my patch panel. And as you can see, it has lots of multicolored different wires going into it. And all of these are color coded. I'm gonna get into that in, in just a second. As you can see from this side, we're labeled one to 12. And then I've started another labeling system up this side from one to six. And that's because this is my WISP side and this is my home network side. And my WISP stands for Wireless Internet Service Provider. And that is exactly what I am. I provide internet to people like an ISP, but wirelessly via antennas on my roof. And these cables here interface with all of those antennas that are on my roof, sending internet to my, at the moment, 30 or so clients. So guys, all of these cables here go to different places around the house, as to which we'll show you towards the end of this video. These three red ones here are three access points and they're all labelled, so one of them is AP Cupboard, one of them is the AP in Bedroom 2, and one of them is the AP in Bedroom 3. These two ones here are dedicated Ethernet cables that go straight to smart connected TVs. And then all of these green ones go to Ethernet ports around the house, and every single one of these, every single one of them, is being occupied with something. And all the cables, guys, leave the rack up here. So I have two sets of radios, one on this side of the house on the roof and one on this side. The cables for the one on this side go in this piece of tubing and the ones for that side go in this piece of tubing. And guys, they go all the way along this piece of conduit here, all the way to the end, up there and on to the roof. And all of these grey cables go off to all the ports in the house. So underneath the patch panel guys, which interfaces with everything in this house, we have a little brush plate and then we have my 16 port gigabit PoE switch from Ubiquiti, their Unify range. I'll link all this in the description. This is my home network switch. There's three cables in here guys, which interface with different things in the rack, but we'll get onto that a little bit later. But essentially this is just a switch that provides PoE power and gigabit speeds to all the devices in my house on my LAN. Powering my entire network is the USG from Unify. Now this is a really powerful router which gives you amazing insights into what's going on on your network. It's one of the more powerful routers I've tested and it's very easy to use with a GUI setup. The whole Unify range is held together with this thing here called the Cloud Key. So now guys, this red cable here, which gives the internet to my USG. As you can see, it plugs into this special switch here. Now this is a really special WISP switch. I'm not gonna get too detailed, but what this device is doing is giving the internet to all of my radios on the roof, as well as obviously my house. So everything I plug into here will be able to interface my main WISP router, which hands out PPPoE authentication to all of my clients. And I, this house, is essentially one one of my clients going into the switch. And the switch interfaces with my main WISP router via this fiber optical cable here. It goes round there and comes out of there. So essentially, internet in and then internet out via fiber to the switch, which then goes off to my radios on the roof to send to my clients and also comes down here via the red cable to my house. Hopefully that makes sense to you guys. 
Now this other red cable here goes into a router board by Microtech and this is just a little board that I am playing with at the moment with some custom ROMs and different things like that. It's just a little bit of a test for me. And what I can do is I have two ports in my room so I can just unplug port one, plug it straight into there and then I can interface via my computer with my Microtech board that I'm just messing around with. And that is the beauty of having a patch panel and a patch panel that is, well, very organised with labels and colour coded. So you're probably thinking, Alex, why is there a big gap in here? Well, I'm actually getting a lease line installed in this house to run my entire network. And, uh, well, the lease line people need at least two spaces in a rack for all of their equipment. So I've left that free there. I'm going to be getting a very, very fast lease line into this house to run my entire network. So guys, underneath this big space here is my UPS ISP power strip, which is actually connected to this down here, this UPS. Now, a UPS is a really cool piece of technology. Pretty much, you plug into the wall with this thing, and then this thing also has a battery in it, and then you connect this power strip to this UPS. Now, the reason I've got the UPS is so that if we are subject to a power cut in this house, it will not turn off any of my main ISP routers or modems or any of the dishes on the roof. So everybody that buys internet from me will stay online, even if the power goes out in this house. And this thing, it'll last about two hours. And now I have a whole separate power strip here called house, and this one is just piped straight into the main. So if the power did terminate in this house and we were subject to a power cut, all of this stuff would go off. And the reason I do that is because, well, what if the power cut lasts for more than two hours? The more things I plug into the UPS, the less time it has to run on its battery. So I separated everything in this house to the UPS. So all the UPS is powering is everything to get the internet to all of my clients. Unfortunately, in this house, if we get the power cut, yeah, our Wi-Fi will go off. But I'm looking at getting another UPS just for this house. So if we do have a power cut, or in the unlikely event of an apocalypse, our internet will stay on for a short amount of time. About two hours. So guys, underneath all of the networking stuff, we have some media related items. Here is a skybox. Now this is how we get our TV signal in the UK. If you want satellite TV, it's a service called Sky. Now this one is the master bedroom box and this is the IR receiver for it. So if you click the remote in the master bedroom, it pulls it out here and sends it as if the box is in the actual master bedroom. And then we also have a Sonos unit here, which has speaker cables running to the speakers in the master bedroom so they can enjoy sound in the ceiling speaker. And that, guys, is the rack. And it is so, so organized and so, so tidy. We're just waiting now for the lease line equipment to be installed. So guys, in the last Home Network video, we installed my entire £2,000 Unify system up on this wall here. And as you guys have now just seen, it's all in the rack up there, along with all of my other internet stuff. But what I've done here is given myself two Cat6 ports right here, and they're all labelled. This one says wardrobe. And now when I come to leave this house in the future, as you guys know, I've just bought myself a, a new house, so I won't be living here much longer. All I have to do is unplug these two cables, and I can take all of my equipment with me. I've got a dumb switch here which is sorting everything out and that's connected to my Sonos unit for my bathroom, my NAS, my little Philips Hue controller and then these Ethernet cables go back up into the loft all the way back down to my computer here. So as soon as I'm finished in this house I unplug my stuff and we're good to go. Now there's a few more sockets situated throughout the house. There's one in this cupboard here next to the in-wall access point from Ubiquiti and then you can see again two Cat6 ports all taken up and being used. And then guys, here is another access point. Here is the one in my room. This is the UAP ACHD. Total overkill for this house, but that is the second access point. And then in here is the access point on the other side of the house. Another HD unit. Again, total overkill. And then guys, in here, if you guys come down with me, you can see here that there is two more ethernet ports which go into another dumb switch. We have another Philips Hue bridge down here. So hopefully, Alexa, turn off the lounge lights. And now guys, there's another port right down here, another Cat6 port. We are now in the main office of the house and this, this is the computer setup. So just a port here for that. 
So guys, I'm going to go ahead and end this little network tour in here. I've shown you the three access points, all the ports around the house, and I've also shown you a little bit of my WISP setup, my wireless ISP selling internet to people with the dishes on the roof. If you want me to go a little bit more in detail with that, guys, definitely drop a like rating and tell us in the comments down below, and I'll try and put together maybe a little private video or something, or I tell you guys how I actually run the WISP and send internet to people that live around me wirelessly. Good place to end it though, guys. Our last network was all built and all over this wall and you guys complained you said Alex put it in a server rack it's so much more professional and guys I think I think I've done it I think not to toot my own horn but it's a pretty powerful network and obviously it's all housed in the one rack in the loft common question I'm gonna get Alex what's gonna happen with this when you move house well this is still my family owned house right so there's people still gonna be living here I can still come back and obviously visit it but I will be moving out of this and into my own house this all of the stuff in the loft will stay where it is and I'll still be able to come back and look at it whenever I want and it will still run my wisp and quick little fact my new house is quite close to this one so I'm gonna be selling myself internet and now a quick word from our sponsor the one main thing I love about Squarespace is the beautiful designer templates that they offer. And these make making a website super, super simple depending on what product you want to sell or show on your site. The other thing is, it's it's just super simple. It's an all-in-one solution and Squarespace handles everything from actually creating your awesome design with these templates that I've just talked about, all the way to the actual domain, which in some cases can be very, very tricky to set up. So you can actually have your custom domain, i.e. www.techflow.co.uk, and Squarespace will handle all of that in one unique package. If you also have a domain already set up, it's super easy to transfer that over to Squarespace. And they also provide award-winning 24-7 support if you're having any problems in creating your website or doing your domain or anything to do with websites. So if you're ready to start up your new business or just want to create a site with your own custom domain, we 100% here at TechFlow recommend Squarespace. We use them ourselves and they are absolutely awesome. All the links to them are down in the description. And Squarespace, thanks for sponsoring today's episode. There you go, guys. My name's been Alex. This has been TechFlow. And we'll see you in the next one. Adios.